Good afternoon, happy Tuesday. How's it going world? Interpreter Ryan here, how's it going? I wanted to welcome you to another one of our three o'clock live streams today on the banks of one of my favorite creeks of all time. Favorite places to be, Prairie Creek. Prairie Creek is located in the aptly named Prairie Creek Redwood State Park. Now when I say Prairie Creek Redwood State Park, that gives you a sense of what we are protecting here in this park, our mighty, majestic coast redwoods. They're all surrounding us here. We were joined on Saturday by interpreter Kyle, who was also at Prairie Creek. He joined you all and gave you a little tour of some of the redwood ecology here. And I'm here today talk a little bit about what's beneath these trees, what's beneath this riparian corridor. Those are the plants that grow beside a creek. We're going to be talking about some of the macroinvertebrates that live here, some of the stream critters that live in this creek. Just get to explore them a little bit and see why they're important. I hope everyone is having a good day. I know that on days like this, a lot of people are wishing they could be out in our parks, and I am really honored to be able to bring some of these parks into your home right now, if you're watching from home. And I hope that very soon you'll be able to come to these places yourself, and hopefully this will just give you a little taste of what you'll get to explore if you come to a place like Prairie Creek. Now, Prairie Creek is a stream that is protected pretty much entirely within Prairie Creek Redwood State Park, and it's part of Redwood National and State Park. So it's part of this partnership that these um, that the National Park Service and the State Parks has, um, this partnership that was formed in the early 90s to co-manage this land. Prairie Creek, Redwood National Park, Jedediah Smith Redwood State Park, and Del Norte Coast Redwood State Park. And so it's this, this partnership. And so you're, if you come there and visit, you're likely to see a state park um, badge and you'll also see a national park badge as well. Um, you'll see people um, wearing both uniforms and of course, a lot of volunteers as well. So let's just get to it. Let's take a look down here at the creek. Now, the banks of a stream like this are a great place to look for creatures that do not have backbones that are you can see with the naked eye and those creatures we call macro invertebrates they're not micro because you can see them with the naked eye so what i like to do when i'm looking for them is just really kind of practice a little patience so we're going to look around you really love just looking at all the beautiful different rocks as well I think we found one as well. Now, if you look these rocks, sometimes you'll see something that looks like a rock, but it actually isn't a rock. I'm gonna point this one out right here. That right there, this looks like a bunch of pebbles, but it's not. Let's see if I can pull it out a little bit. That is a bug that is hanging out in a little shell that it's created out of pebbles. And that is one of the ones that it's really common to see here. It's called a caddisfly larva. There's another one right there. Caddisflies. Uh, they have this life cycle that takes them, uh, they, their eggs are laid usually near the water um, or on sticks and things like that in the water. And they spend their larval stage as these aquatic freshwater creatures. They make a little shell with pebbles and they'll browse around, maybe forage for little pieces of detritus that's dead material. Or maybe they will 
Um, some species might even eat small, smaller invertebrates, kind of predatory. And then after a long time of living under the water, they can get pretty big. They can get to almost an inch long. Then they will pupate, just like a butterfly in a cocoon. And then when they break from their pupa stage, they will be a fly, a flying creature that kind of looks like a moth. And the caddisflies, they only spend maybe a couple weeks out here. They don't even usually eat when they're on the surface. They're just going to mate and then they're going to die. But these little creatures, these little caddisfly larvae are really important. They're just one of many of the little critters down here that are super important for the ecology of this stream. They are what we call indicator species. They tell us about the health of the streams. They tell us about how clean the water is. These are little critters that are really sensitive to pollution. And so you're only gonna find creatures like caddisflies or stonefly larva or mayfly, cranefly, dobsonfly, nymphs, lots of those creatures. You're only gonna find them in streams that are pretty pollution free. And these little critters, of course, are important because of, well, if there's any anglers out there or fly fishermen out there, you might have some more experience with these flies because maybe you have some bait that looks like them. So a lot of people will go fishing using bait that looks like a caddis fly and even kind of mimic some of the flight patterns of them when they are, when they are um, casting. And uh, pardon me if I don't have all my lingo down, I'm not a fly fisherman myself. And uh, so mimicking that gives us a sense of what you're trying to catch, right? Fish like salmon and trout. Fish love to eat these little, um, these little macroinvertebrates. So they're a really important food supply. I'm gonna see if I can find another one. Just kind of hang out by this creek. Oh, this one's good because you can kind of see it's little, you might be able to see its legs a little bit. It's early in the season, so in the summer, you start to see a lot bigger caddisfly larva hanging out. And sometimes they'll make their little, their little shells with sticks, and it just looks like little sticks and twigs moving around on the stream bed. I could spend all day just hanging out by this stream. It's really, really peaceful. It's such a nice, uh, tranquil experience to just hang out and really look closely. And in the summer times, sometimes when I have done junior ranger activities for kids, we'll take them down to these creeks and we'll maybe bring a key um, and try to identify some of the stream critters. Let's see if we can see if we can find that water strider. Y'all see that? It's a very elusive water strider. Keeping its distance from us. So these benthic macroinvertebrates, these stream critters, are important food for salmon that live in this creek. And in Prairie Creek, there are coho salmon and coastal cutthroat trout and some Chinook salmon and steelhead trout as well. And these fish depend on this part of the stream as the last stage and the beginning stages of their life cycle. So every fall and winter time, the salmon come and migrate up from the ocean back up Prairie Creek. <clears throat> and they make their way up into some of the streams um, around this area and uh, some of the streams that feed into this. And um, sometimes you'll spot some. They like to kind of hang out under these logs when they're coming up and kind of hide. You can also find juvenile salmon in these pools. This is a great example of some shelter 
for these little juvenile salmon. I don't know if we'll be able to spot any juvenile salmon right now, any fry. It's a little early in the season, but you can at least look around. You can explore this fallen log. We call this large wood. And it's a good example of epiphytes, plants growing on top of other plants and other structures. We've got ferns that use these logs as a perch to grow. We call these nurse logs. This is just, just perfect salmon habitat. This is a great spot in the summertime to look around and find small little fry. Just wanted to give you an opportunity to explore a little bit of Prairie Creek. The area that I'm at right now is right near the entrance to the campground, to um, the campfire center, just kind of around that corner. Let's take a look at some of the plants that grow beside the stream, the riparian plants that you might find here at Prairie Creek. So much of what is here is going to be used by the salmon, and the salmon will eventually give back their nutrients to these plants and these organisms here. They're, they're so interconnected. This, what we're looking at is a berry called salmon berry. You can take a look at those salmon berry blossoms. They're kind of a tart, orange-colored berry, kind of have a salmon color. They look a lot like blackberries in their shape, um, but they are a lot less sweet, but they're still a tasty streamside snack. <clears throat> we have our white alder. Alders are a pretty flimsy tree. They only live 80 to 100 years, and that means that they are constantly toppling over in the winter time, and that's one of that, that little tree laying across there is a, is a white alder that fell. I've been in this forest at times when the alders have come down while I was talking to some, some hikers and you're looking around like, what is that? And sure enough, another alder has fallen. So I just wanted to give you an opportunity to virtually step outside of your home, stand next to a peaceful stream and get to appreciate some of the smaller things that are within within this much larger ecosystem of the coast redwood forests. And I'm wondering if you'd like me to end on a note of the old growth ecosystem itself. Do you? Probably do. All right, so we're gonna make our way away from the banks of the stream and we're gonna walk into the larger old growth here. Anybody know that that bird that is singing right now? That bird song. If you know it, you should leave a comment. I love Prairie Creek because of the complexity of the trees that grow here. Let's see, let's give you a better look up. There are just a lot of really gnarly trees growing in this area that have been burned by fires throughout the centuries, that have come back in these reiterations that are happening here where the tree is growing back from the base you can see re reiterations up here in this tree where new trunks have basically sprouted off of this damaged trunk. Anytime a tree gets damaged, a redwood tree gets damaged, it responds by growing these gnarly trunks from the original trunk. And that becomes perfect habitat for the endangered marble murelet. That's a bird that uses these trees as their nest, but then goes out to the ocean to feed. 
So nothing in this redwood forest is what it seems. It's never just a collection of trees. It is an entire community. Well, you cannot take one thing on its own. Everything relies on one another. The salmon that come up this river, their nutrients feed this forest. These forests grow better because of the salmon, uh, the salmon nutrients, the salmon carcasses that are basically fertilizer for this forest. And then the creatures that depend on this water, that, that life cycle is part of this water, those benthic macro invertebrates that we talked about, they're an important food supply for the salmon. I have this poster that I brought, I should show it. This is a great overview of some of the creatures that you find living in these aquatic environments. There's our caddisfly larva that we mentioned earlier. You can find all kinds of other things. It's a great opportunity if you've got kids to come to a stream, any stream that has somewhat clean water is a great place to find a lot of these creatures. Even mosquitoes, mosquito larva you'll find in here, dragonflies, dragonfly nymphs hanging out in this area as well. It's just a, it's just a great opportunity to, to really connect with the life cycles and ecosystems. So if you have a creek nearby, I really encourage you to go to that stream and explore some of the things that live there. Try to figure out why they're important. So with that, I want to thank you for joining me here at Prairie Creek Redwood State Parks. Remember to stick with us every afternoon at 3 p.m. Pacific time for these live streams. And I hope you're staying safe. Thank you all for following the guidelines of sheltering in place and, and staying home whenever possible. You are the solution to helping us flatten the curve and helping us be able to come back into these open spaces again. So thank you so much, everybody, and I hope that you have a great rest of your day. Be well. From Prairie Creek, signing off.